the SpongeBob SquarePants movie takes on rather too much water during its extended feature-length submersion. Steven Hillenberg's enormously clever and appealing animated creation, which has been one of the Nickelodeon Channel's biggest hits since debuting in 1999, still possesses charm, as well as visual and musical appeal, on the big shorn. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie takes on rather too much water during its extended feature-length submersion. Steven Hillenberg's enormously clever and appealing animated creation, which has been one of the Nickelodeon Channel's biggest hits since debuting in 1999, still possesses charm, as well as visual and musical appeal, on the big shorn. But as with many short-form TV entities when sex settled in length, SpongeBob proves more palatable as scrumptious fast food than full-scale past. Still, B.O. should prove absorbent with the target audience through Thanksgiving and slightly beyond, with much more in store down the line as a home entertainment staple. Very popular with college students as well as with parents, the show featuring Peppy SpongeBob, Depp Starfish best friend Patrick and curmudgeonly neighbor Squidward has always brandished a hipster veneer, out reimagination and sharp design sense that make it by far the most whole family-friendly Saturday morning cartoon. Another graduate, actor John Lasseter and Brad Bird, of the Kellerts animation program, Hillenberg also studied and worked in marine biology. These interests have merged and morphed producing a pop impressionistic take on underwater life inhabited by spirited and disarming characters. Amusing live H and opening as a bunch of scruffy pirates singing the familiar SpongeBob title tune a la Gilbert and Sullivan in gleeful celebration of the discovery of movie tickets in a treasure chest. They hybrid to what looks like San Francisco's late, lamented surf theater to take in the show. At the outset, the tranquility of Bikini Bottom is disrupted by two into or events. After a successful run flipping patties at the Krusty Krab, SpongeBob, voiced as always by Tom Kenny, is mortified to be bypassed for the job of manager of the new Krusty Krab 2 by cranky Squidward, Roger Bumpass. At the same time, scheming plankton, Mr. Lawrence, proprietor of the dismally unsuccessful Chumbucket Eatery, contrives to steal the crown of King Neptune, Jeffrey Timber, and convince the king that Mr. Krabs, Clancy Brown, was responsible, resulting in a death sentence for SpongeBob's greedy encrusted boss. With Neptune's dog Missy, Scarlett Johansson, imploring our angry dad to delay impling crabs on his trident and plankton taking over Bikini Bottom by turning the population into bucket-helmeted automatons, SpongeBob and Patrick ventured the deepest shell city in search of the missing crown. Amid assorted skulls and monsters, they find their scariest nemesis and biker hitman Ennis, Alec Baldwin, and in the bargain achieve a measure of manhood and maturity, qualities that could have burned SpongeBob the managerial post in the first place. While the journey is neither uneventful nor without humor, a certain tedium sets in, that isn't helped by uninspired set pieces such as an interlude in which a depressed SpongeBob and Patrick get drunk on ice cream at the Goofy Goober Night Spit. Giving things a funny jolt, however, is a live ancient comic climax in which a self-deprecating David Hasselhoff gives the intrepid heroes a ride on his back as he speeds them back home across the waves like a human surfboard, with a desperate denizen hot pursuit.